Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to be upgrading my test rig PC with this Gigabyte GT1030. This is a very good value entry level graphics card. It's even passively cooled. So let's go and take a closer look. So here we have our GT1030. And just in case you're not in the know, in the graphics card marketplace, there are two dominant manufacturers of graphics card chipsets, NVIDIA, as we have here, and also Radeon. And what they do is they produce these chipsets, the components for the graphics cards, they produce reference designs for graphics cards, and then other manufacturers produce the final consumer products. So here we have a Gigabyte card based on the NVIDIA GeForce GT1030 chipset. And in case you're wondering, this cost me £64.99 on Amazon Co. UK. This is in the November 2017. If I'd bought it on Amazon.com, it would have cost me $69.99. Links, of course, in video description. Anyway, let's open up this box. It's a lovely box. You always get lovely boxes with the graphics cards and motherboards. They always have the best boxes, don't they? But anyway, let's, let's get inside, get this thing open. And uh, there we are. Whoa, this is a very crinkly exciting looking card. We need to get in here. Mr. Scissors is on hand to let us let us in. There we are. And if we just get inside, we can take a, a closer look at the card. And as I'm sure you've noticed, the most significant thing you can see here is the heatsink. There is an absolutely massive aluminium heatsink on this card because it is passively cooled. No fan on here, it'll be completely silent in operation. And this can happen because it only draws about a maximum of 30 watts. Let's take off the, uh, the covers of the, uh, the connector down the bottom, the PCIe connector, which will connect it into the computer, and also the covers on the uh, connectors for our uh, monitors or monitor. And as you will see, we've got two connections from Monta here. We've got an HDMI 2.0B connector and a single link DVI D connector. So the key thing to note here is if you've got a VGA only Monta, you can't use this card. The maximum resolution here is 496 by 2160, so true 4K. And the car supports a DirectX 12 and OpenGL 4.5. And it's got two gigabytes of GDDR5 RAM. The other key thing for me is this card has got a 384 CUDA cores. CUDA cores are effectively parallel graphics processors, very important in gaming, but also important in video editing. A lot of video editors rely on you having CUDA cores on your graphics card and also on a reasonable amount of memory. Two gigabytes of graphics memory isn't, isn't too bad at all. And the other reason I'm fitting this card into my test rig is because it's a, a recent card. This is a May 2017 card. And that means the uh, graphics drivers will be very up to date and they'll be supported for a long period of time. I should also note this is a half height card. You'll see it's fitted here with a full height bracket, but in the package also came this bracket. So this could be fitted down here. So this could be fitted in a, uh, a shallower PC if you need it. And uh, just to be absolutely open with everything else, you've also got here in, in the, uh, the, the box this little graphics card guide, and you've got of course some drivers, but I would suspect that even though this is a modern card, there'll be more recent drivers available online. So there we are, that's our GT1030, nice little piece of hardware. Let's go and fit it in my test rig PC. So, here is my test PC, which I use for a lot of the software work on this channel. It's a 3 gigahertz quad-core AMD A83870K CPU, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and currently a GeForce 9500 GT graphics card. So if we just get the side off the case there, we can get inside, and uh, here we are, we can see the uh, old graphics card. We need to get that out and fit the new one. So guess who's come back into town? Yes, it's Mr. Screwdriver. Mr. Screwdriver's back. So we just have to take off the uh, screw here. It shouldn't be too difficult. Let's get that out. Don't drop it inside the case. There we are, that's come out. Now to uh, release the graphics card, there is a little lever I can't actually show you here. It's down behind the graphics card. I have to pull that back and that will lift up and then we can lift out the card like that. There's the old card. It's done some good service. It was in this machine. It was in another machine before that. It's been going years and years. But sadly, a lot of more recent video editors I want to test on this PC won't actually work on this card at all because the drivers simply aren't supported anymore. So that's the principal reason 
this card is going, and of course to get some speed. And I'm also very interested in putting this card in because it is silent. I'd love to make this whole PC silent at some point, but um, that might be a future project. Anyway, this will fit in here. Just to point out, you need one PCIe 16 slot to put your graphics card in. And particularly using this particular model, it will cover two slots because of the width of the heatsink, as you can, you can see there. So here's a little lever we have to hold back just down there to actually let things in. So we'll hold that back in a second, I think. But basically when this goes in, it won't go in until I've held that lever back. That's going in something like that. Pull the little thing. There we are. Get in, you swine. I'm trying to do this without leaning into shot and so you can't see me. There we are, that's it, and everything's clicked into place. That is good. And so I'll just get Mr. Screwdriver back with the, the screw, put this in. This will be a, a good upgrade, I think. I am looking forward to having this working. There we are, that's going in nice and securely. I hope, anyway. There we are. This is one of the simpler upgrades you can do. That's nice and straightforward. That is fitted. We've now got the new card in the PC. So I just need to put all the case back together and we'll test it out. So here we now are in Windows 10 and everything is working perfectly. I should let you know I did nothing to Windows to actually start installing the card. I simply closed the machine down, took out the old card, put the new one in as you just saw, and then booted up and things booted absolutely fine. It didn't have the right graphics resolution because I hadn't installed the drivers, but everything worked okay. I can't show you the process of installing the drivers because I can't record the screen when it hasn't got the right drivers installed, if you see what I mean. But this is what you get when you put in the DVD to install all, all the software. And you'll see for some reason Gigabyte thinks you want to install lots of things which are nothing whatsoever to do with what you want. So you don't need Google Drive, you don't need uh, a toolbar, you don't need Chrome, and to be honest, you don't need the Azorus graphics engine as well. That's all you need to do, and then you can install your drivers from there. Now, I'm not going to do that because obviously I've done this already, but when you have installed that, you will end up on your, with, on your machine. Of course it didn't install correctly because I didn't run it, you stupid thing. Anyway, don't you just hate computers. When you've installed all this, you've got your graphics drivers in, you will have on your machine GeForce Experience, or in my case, an updated version of GeForce Experience, which is the utility from GeForce for doing things like uh, updating your graphics drivers. So we can press Get Started on here, and you get this, which says you have to log in. You have to either create an NVIDIA account, which of course clearly I'm not going to do, or you have to log in by giving them your Google details or your Facebook details. What is going on here? This is absolutely bonkers. This is a complete disgrace. I've just bought a new piece of hardware. I'm simply trying to install the drivers to make it work. I really should not have to give personal information or create an account to do that. So this, I think, is an absolutely disgraceful development from GeForce. I'd also point out you don't have to do this. I, in the end, didn't do this. I made sure I got my drivers by going to this PC and uh, properties, and I went through to device manager and uh, through there to display adapters, and under here did the properties on what now shows the NVIDIA GeForce card. It shows it's a generic Microsoft driver when I started. Properties on that and you'll see the drivers there, and I've now got the updated driver, which is, it seems to be the September 2017 driver. I can update the driver from here. So I'm gonna get rid of the GeForce utility. It clearly is not a, not a good idea. Anyway, I've tested things out. I've run two things in particular. First of all, I've run this, which is the DirectX 12 test from the Passmark Benchmark Suite. And this is running at 1920 by 1080 and achieving just about 30 frames a second. And I think anyway, this looks pretty good. This proves you could do some decent gaming on the GT 1030. It is a good low-end graphics card, an entry-level graphics card for gaming. You're not going to be able to play the most sophisticated games at very high frame rates. You won't play 4K games on this, but it certainly will work as this demonstrates. The other thing I've tested out is running up this program here, which is the DaVinci Resolve video editor. This wouldn't run at all on the system with the old graphics card. It simply hadn't got modern enough drivers to make it work, but here it's running very well indeed. Nice and smooth. Um, if we play it through, we press play there, you'll see it's achieving full frame rate. Uh, green there means it's having no problems playing the footage. 
and uh, if we just play this back, this is actually playing ProRes video, very high data rate video, quite a big test for the machine. And if I just full screen that, Welcome it works very well. Very strange me future. talking to me. So this is a good result. By fitting a GT1030, I've very positively improved the performance of this machine. And if you are in the market for a graphics card to allow you to run things like DaVinci Resolve, I think I've proved conclusively it's a very good card to consider. I'm very pleased with my GT1030, and in my next video, I'll be using my upgraded test rig PC to compare eight free video editors. Yes, my free video editor head-to-head -head will finally have arrived. But now that's it for this video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.